as you are praying in tongues, you are praying the very will of Jesus for that situation. That's intercession. When you step into this kind of prayer and you're praying in the Spirit, you are praying the perfect will of God. That is the power of prayer. And we will see this nation turned and transformed to the glory of God. Hello, dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg. We have been having a look this week at the power of prayer. And I want to take us to a very important point now. We've already seen that God has given us a promise in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, that those that are called by His name, that's you and me, if we would humble ourselves and pray, then God would hear from heaven. He would heal, He would forgive our sins and heal our land. Now, we want to see our land healed. We want to see all the problems that we see around us solved. And I've said it again and again and again. It's so important to get a hold of this. Just simply solving a problem by throwing more money at it or even finding the right leadership doesn't necessarily solve the problem because we're dealing with a spiritual issue here. So the battle has to take place in the realm of the spirit first. That's why James says in chapter 4 verse 7 that if we submit to God and we draw close to Him, that if we resist the devil, he will flee. The devil will flee. See, we're not ignorant of Satan and his devices. We understand the enemy has tried to influence this world, but you and I have been given authority. And if we resist the devil, he will flee. And that's why it says in verse 8, if you draw near to God, God will draw near to you. So it begins with you and me. We make a decision. We're going to intercede for our nation. Or we're going to intercede for our family, your business, whatever the situation may be. When we say we will draw near to God and we make a decision to pray, then God will heal. He will reach out. So it begins with you and me making that decision. Now come have a look over here at Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. And remember, Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1, he told us that first of all, we need to be praying making intercessions, and then he told us that we need to be doing that for kings, those that are in authority. If we want to lead peaceful lives, it begins by praying for our leaders. Now, it's easy to criticize. I've said it before. It doesn't take faith to criticize. You know, we can moan about our nation, moan about the corruption, moan about the leaders. That doesn't transform and change a nation. Moaning doesn't change it. Even replacing the leader doesn't necessarily change it. It will help if you get a godly leader in place, of course. But if that leader is not protected and looked after through the prayer of intercession, they're going to be up to the same temptations. And if they're not children of God, if they're not serving Jesus, they can land up being just as corrupted as any other leadership would have been in that position. Why? Because it's a spiritual influence. And if we recognize that as a church and say, you know what, we have the authority we're going to stand in agreement together and we're going to pray and intercede. Even though that person may not know Jesus, even though that person may not be following or hearing God's voice, we do know it. And so we pray. And when we intercede and pray, then God is able to move. And either He moves in that person's heart and they give their life to Jesus. If they're already born again, they will continue following Him. If not, God can bring someone of influence in to that situation that are serving God and do hear His voice, and He can influence that situation through that person. But that happens when you and I pray. Now have a look at Ephesians chapter 6. He says here in verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And we already saw the previously this week, we are not ignorant of Satan and his devices. So we recognize it's a spiritual attack. In fact, he says in verse 12, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So your problem is not a person. <laughs> You've got to get hold of that. I know. I understand. I get it because sometimes I have things happen and people come against me and you're so upset and angry with that individual. 
And I know when I've spoken to people about this and said the problem is not the person, it is Satan. They say, yes, but they shouldn't have listened to Satan. I know, I get that. Maybe they shouldn't, even if it's a Christian. Yes, they shouldn't have listened to the devil. But hey, listen, we all have succumbed to that temptation somewhere along the line. So yes, sometimes we do need to sit down with, a, some, with, with that person and we need to uh, reconcile. Maybe we need to confess to one another and, and tell the person what the problem is. Those all help, but they don't necessarily solve the situation. The solution begins in the realm of the spirit. That's what he's saying here. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Now, that's just simply describing various ranks of demons. So that's where our warfare is. Because even though I may sit down with somebody and explain to them how they hurt me, and they may in that moment say, look, I'm sorry, I apologize, I shouldn't have done that. But if the demonic realm hasn't been sorted out, those same demons will influence those same people and they'll do the same thing again. And so we recognize my warfare is not you. It's not people. It's not leaders. It's, it's not situations. It's, it's not my wife. It's not my children. It's, it is the demons. Now, if I understand that, now he says, yeah, verse 14, therefore stand, having girded your waist with truth. That's the word of God. I take the word on the situation and I surround myself with that. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Remember, by grace you say, by faith. It's a gift from God, not a result of works. And so his gift is that gift of righteousness. And when I receive the gift of righteousness, then I can reign in life. So I protect myself knowing I'm not right because I'm good. I'm right because he made me right. I am righteous today by his righteousness. Having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And so I receive the gospel. And he is the one that has given me the good news. He has saved me and he's given me the right to lead other people to Jesus. And so I take these feet and I go walk and I go into the enemy's territory and I go lead people to Jesus, bringing them to the gospel of the kingdom of God. And then verse 16, above all, take the shield of faith with which you're able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Now notice it doesn't say it'll stop the darts from being shot at you. It'll stop them from hitting you. So the enemy's still going to take his shots. He's going to try and take you down. But if you got the shield of faith, what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. How does faith come? By hearing, hearing by the word of God. What's the spirit of faith? Is having believed, I speak. And so when I hold up that shield, God has said, and I declare the word of God, that protects me. So no matter what the enemy is trying to shoot at me, if I keep up that word as the faith of God, it will protect me from the effects of that attack. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. That's what the Bible says. If God's for you, who can be against you? See, that's your shield, and that's what you're standing on. Now look at verse 17. Take up the helmet of salvation. That protects my mind. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Remember, every time Jesus defeated the devil, he said, it is written. And when he said, it is written, it settled it. That's the sword of the Spirit. And then look at verse 18. Now that you have this full armor on, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Now that's talking about intercession. So now notice, we began with the fact that it's the enemy that came against us. We're not trying to fight people. We're going to deal with it in the realm of the Spirit. How do I do that? I stand in the knowledge of who I am as a child of God. I've got the full armor of God on me. Now I'll take up the warfare. What is that? Praying with all prayer. Now listen to this. Underline this in your Bible. In the Spirit. In the Spirit. In the Spirit. So it's not just praying in English or your home language. It's also praying in the Spirit. Remember Paul said that if I pray in the Spirit and I pray in English, I also sing in the Spirit 
and I sing in English. And so he spoke about the fact that when we pray in the Spirit, it's praying in tongues. He who prays in a tongue does not pray to men, but to God. Now, this is not just talking about the foreign tongues, like there is different types of tongues. You can have tongues where someone can speak in an earthly language that they have not yet learned and by the gift of God are able to speak, but someone in their presence will understand them. That's one type of tongues. But there is another type of tongues where the Bible says we pray to God, not to men, for no one understands. That's talking about your prayer language. Come and have a look here at Romans chapter 8. And the Bible says here in verse 25, listen to this now. We hope for what we do not see. We eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Now, in context of what we've been talking about, that hope for what we don't see could be talking about the solution for our nation or the solution in your business, your ministry, or in your family, or maybe your marriage. You're, you're desperate to see this problem solved. You can see the problem all around you, and you sometimes you want to just moan about it. I know what it's like. We do. I mean, we feel like we just want to moan, and that happens. But I've taught myself, as much as I would like to moan, moaning never solved the problem. So what do I do? I say, okay, Lord, moaning about it is not going to solve it. What is the solution? So now I see something. I see, uh, I'm expecting to see the solution in our nation. I want to see peace. I want to see prosperity. I want to see the drought broken. I want to see the heavens open and rain pouring. I want to see education for everybody. I want to see everybody has a place to live. Everybody has a place of employment. It looks after them. Those are things that we eagerly wait for, but maybe we don't see it. Likewise, the Spirit helps in our weaknesses. Now, what's our weakness? As much as I want to see the solution, I may not know what to do for it. Now I want to pray for it, but I don't know what to pray. Look at this. Likewise, the Spirit helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. Isn't that interesting? Paul says we do not know. Not sometimes. We never know what to pray for as we ought. So what happens? I don't know. I see the problem. Now I can pray and say, Father, I want to see that problem solved. I want to see those people prosperous. I want to see education. I want to see provision. I want to see the rain come. But I don't know what's needed. I don't know who needs to be put into leadership. I don't know who needs to be taken out of leadership. I don't know what policies need to be changed. I don't know that. So I don't know what to pray for. But listen to this. The Spirit, look at verse 26. The Spirit helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Wow, look at that. We're talking about interceding. So you and I make a choice. Yes, God Yes, the problem. It could be uh, the, the government. It could be a position of leadership. It could be a situation. But the people there are not calling on God. I come into that and I say, I will intercede. I will pray to God. I humble myself. I will pray to God. Now, I want to pray to God, but I don't know what to pray. <laughs> the Holy Spirit in you makes intercession. He takes over. As long as you give yourself and make yourself available, he will pray through you. Now, here's the thing. Listen to this. He will make intercession with groanings which cannot be uttered. Verse 27. Now, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Hallelujah. Now, here's something that's interesting. When you do Bible study, you will notice, if you have your printed Bible with you, uh, the in the New King James and in the King James, some other translations as well, you will notice that the words, the will of, are in italics. Now, the reason it's put into italics is to let you know that when this was translated, because remember, the original wasn't in English. Uh, so the original here was written in Greek. It's been translated out of the Greek into English. Sometimes 
words were missing because the transcript maybe had holes in it. Or when it translates from the Greek into the English, it doesn't quite make sense. Then the translator, the one printing the Bible, put some words in. So they added a few words so that the sentence would make sense. But the words added were them adding to the original. So it wasn't in the original. Now to let you know what words were added, they put them in italics. Isn't that interesting? Okay, so now you notice the will of is in italics. So let's just say for a moment, keep it there. You can keep it there for future reading. But just for now, we're going to imagine those words are not there because they were added by the, the translator the, inter the, the, the translator and the printer. So let's imagine the will of is not there. Let's read the verse again. So now, verse 26, the Spirit helps us. The Holy Spirit helps us because we do not know what to pray. But when we... Pray, he makes intercession with groanings which cannot be uttered. That groanings which cannot be uttered is praying in tongues. That's praying in the Spirit. Now, as we pray in tongues, pray in the Spirit, now he makes intercession for us according to God. Did you see that? We took out the will of. He makes intercession according to God. Now, what does that mean? Well, the Bible tells us that Jesus is forever seated at the right hand of God. Look at verse 34. He who, who is he who condemns it? It is Christ who died and furthermore is risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. So Jesus, his part of his ministry today is making intercession for us. Now, can you see this picture? The Father is seated on the throne. Jesus is seated at his right hand. Now, Jesus is praying to the Father for what we need. Isn't that interesting? Jesus praying to the Father. Now, here's a good question. When Jesus prays, are his prayers answered? Yes, they are. He knows exactly what to pray. So he is praying the perfect will of God. And the Holy Spirit, the third person, is in you. He hears the prayers that Jesus is praying to the Father, and he says, this is what Jesus is busy praying, and he releases it in your heart. You pray by the Spirit. When you pray in tongues, as you pray in tongues, you're not hearing the English, but you know that you're praying according to God. As you pray in tongues, while you're praying, you're praying in agreement with Jesus. And the Bible says, where any two agree touching anything, it'll be done for them. Glory. Now get a hold of that. It's you, the Holy Spirit in you, Jesus praying to the Father, the perfect will. The Holy Spirit hears that. He prays in you. You pray in tongues. And as you are praying in tongues, you are praying the very will of Jesus for that situation. That's intercession. I want to encourage you. Press into that. Trust God. If you're not yet praying in the Spirit, give our call line, our phone line a call. The pastor there will help you. Find someone who's spiritful, ask them to pray for you. Because when you step into this kind of prayer and you're praying in the Spirit, you're praying the perfect will of God. That is the power of prayer. And we will see this nation turned and transformed to the glory of God. I praise God. I want to share something with you around your seed as well in the area of intercession. You and I have the authority to pray and intercede on behalf of our nation and behalf of all those that we desire to be saved. And that's why we're going to continue doing that. Keep praying and keep interceding. And that's why these programs are so important. This is a program where we take the time to spend around the Word of God so that we can hear from God Himself what His will and His plan and His purpose is. And so we want to thank God for partners like you that continue to make it possible so that we can do this and reach out to our nation and nations around the world to hear the gospel and then to hear how to walk in these things. That's what wisdom for life means. We need to choose life. And the way we choose life is through wisdom. And wisdom is not just knowing what, but it's also knowing how. 
And so we want to thank you so much because of your partnership. As you know, on Friday here at Allenbag Ministries, this is our giving day, a day of offering where you say thank you to God for the programs. Thank you to God for the word that he brings to you and then to partner with us so that we can reach further and reach other lives, get more people saved, get into the prison, see the transformation, be able to reach into places of influence so we can see our nation turn and see the power of prayer manifesting. And so if you are sowing your seed today, I want to thank you so much for it. The details are on the screen. You can go onto our website. It's very easy there. That you just a few clicks, you can sow and give so that we can continue this work. Those that have sown their seed, I want to stand in agreement with you. Even as you sow today, generously, let's believe God together. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 that he who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. And because you're a cheerful giver, God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always have all sufficiency in all things and abundance for every good work. We want to continue the work of God. We want to continue praying, continue reaching out and getting people saved. And grace abounds towards you. God provides your every need because of the seed that you've sown. Let's agree on that together. Father, I thank you for my dear partner. As they have sown their seed today, I come into agreement that according to your word, my God, you shall supply all their need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And I thank you for this, and we give you praise and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I believe that prayer was answered, and I thank God that you're going to see the increase in your life and see a greater power, greater influence as grace abounds towards you, not just in the area of finances. You will see God looking after you, but you're going to see more influence in the area of, of, of favor and leadership and God's raising you up strong. So keep walking in the things of God. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. To be a force, to have power, to exert power. In this series, you will discover your part in God's plans. Even though we know what God has said, it's up to you and me to pray to bring it in. You'll discover the authority we have when we pray. When you speak what God says, then angels will go into action. And you'll discover the power that's released when we pray. Bring it forth in prayer. This series will shed light on the different ways to pray in the Spirit, the importance of prayer relating to salvation, and will strengthen your faith to deepen your prayer life. Let's be those prayers, let's intercede, and let's see God move powerfully because heaven moves when Christians pray. So get your series today by contacting us here at Allen Bag Ministries. You and I have been given a powerful, powerful tool in prayer. So let's use it. We know that God wants to move in our lives. He wants to move in our ministries, in our families, in our businesses, and in this nation. And so when we pray as a people, heaven moves. Now get a hold of the series. It's six parts where we have a look from the Word of God, encouraging ourselves in the Scriptures to show how when people prayed in the Bible, we saw that God answered prayer every time. And that's our key, is that if we would just do it, we would see God move powerfully in our lives. So get a hold of the series today. You can also grab it on MP3 now. That is a thumb drive which you plug into your computer, download into your listening device, and so you'll have it with you all the time. The reason is so we can listen to it again and again and again. The more you hear God's Word, the more faith rises in your heart. So get that. Heaven moves when Christians pray. Well, that's all we've got time for today. We're going to get together in our various places of worship. I want to encourage you, if you are not yet in a good, word-based, spirit-filled church, find one. It's so important to be part of the body of Christ. And go and let that pastor know that you're there and you want to be a part of the work in that town. If you're in Cape Town, you're welcome to come and visit us. There are our campuses. We've got quite a few now in different places. Uh, if you, I am in the building, please come up to the front. Shake my hand. I'd love to meet you. Other than that, you have a great weekend. We'll get together again on Monday. This is Alan Bagg reminding you Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. 
God bless you. We invite you to visit us online at allenbagministries.org. On our website, you will discover who we are as a ministry, as well as the call and purpose the Lord has placed on the lives of Alan and Janine Bag. You will also learn about the various initiatives and ministries that Alan Bag Ministries make use of to reach every tribe and tongue on the global scale. If you've just started your journey, you'll find some great material that will help you build your faith and get you started on your walk with Jesus. If you'd like to be part of the Alan Bag Ministries family, you can also connect with us on our website and be part of our e-family that meet together every week. At allenbagministries.org, there is plenty of information about partnership as well as many options to come alongside this ministry as a partner. As a partner of Allen Bag Ministries, you will have early access to special meetings and seminars with Allen Bag, as well as discounted prices on study material taught here at Allen Bag Ministries. Good morning, my dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Allen Bag. You can also catch up on any Wisdom for Life programming, or if you prefer, watch our latest Wisdom for Life programs with Allen Bag on our website. All services at the Bay Christian Family Church are also streamed on our Allen Bag Ministries website, so you too can be part of our E family that also participate over weekends and on special occasions. At AllenBagMinistries.org, you can get hold of some great study material and resources, as well as some faith building products that are occasionally on promotion. Whether you're interested in information about starting your journey as a believer or growing in your understanding and faith. If you're looking to participate in our services and television programs or if you're interested in getting hold of some great study resources. Whether you're looking for information about Allen Bag Ministries or if you'd like to come alongside us as a partner, we invite you to visit us at allenbagministries.org so that we can be part of your community and help you in any way we can. So visit us at allenbagministries.org, equipping believers so they can prosper in their ministry.